into the beautiful, quite chilly Spa Francorchamps for round three of the FIA World Endurance Championship because it's time for the Total Energy Six Hours of Spa. Cannot believe we're here in this beautiful race track again, Sam. What does this track mean to endurance racing? What is its heritage? What is its history? Well, it's truly legendary, uh, Alexa. I think the, the first race, six hour race, it was 1953 when Olivier Jean de Bien won in a Ferrari. So since the WEC started in 2012, it's been an ever present. And some of the racing we've seen here has just been superb. I mean, the legendary names all around this circuit. We've got Le Com, we've got Eau Rouge, we've got Blanchiment, Pouol. Everyone is such a challenge for these drivers, especially in traffic. And of course, that very fickle spa weather. Well, we have to talk about it. We're English, right? It's pretty chilly here. It's a bit of rain forecast. Is that going to present a new challenge for our teams this weekend? I think you almost expect rain at Spa, right? I mean, you, you know, it, it says it on the tin, doesn't it? Spa. I mean, it kind of <laughs> literally means water. So I think the real challenge is actually going to be the temperature. You know, it's about 10 degrees as we speak. Tropical for us Brits, of course, but in terms of the drivers in the cars, not having any kind of... Um, heat in the tyres in terms of the, the tyre blankets and the, the treatment of the tyres is going to be just a huge ask for them if the temperature is like this. I think if the rain does affect the race it's going to be really interesting to see how the different new hypercars react to that because we haven't seen them publicly yet on how they actually race in wet conditions so a lot of unknowns if it is wet but Look, it's Spa, it's a microclimate. Literally anything can happen hour by hour weather-wise. Well, that's exactly what we love about racing here. And going into this weekend, it's the biggest hypercar field we've had to date. Now with 13 cars, that beautiful brand new Jota, a second Cadillac car. What can we expect from the teams this weekend? I think from those two, um, Cadillac have obviously, you know, a great commitment, first of all, to the WEC and having this second car. Really interested to see Sebastian Bourdais, Renger van der Zander, and, and I guess a late entry in Jack Aitken, who was only announced a few days before the race, how they get on. I think they'll just want to accrue more miles in that car, learn more data. Obviously, two, two cars just adds data and, and understanding of this new uh, V Series R model. The Jota going for gold. All the cliches are going to come out, Incredible aren't they, about that car? Incredible puns will be coming. It, it looks just, oh, it's just so aesthetically pleasing, isn't it? It is a car? beautiful car, yeah. truly beautiful car. I think it's going to be a bit of an extended test for them. They shook the car down at Weissach, which is Porsche's private test track in Germany. But they're going to be learning by every lap. I mean, in that car, Will Stevens, UFEA, and of course, Antonio Felix da Costa. But yeah, what a great addition. And like you said, the biggest entry. So lots to, lots to relish on Saturday afternoon. Two races in, two wins for Toyota. One apiece, number seven, number eight. I think the big question on everyone's lips going into this race weekend is, can anyone beat Toyota? Yeah, I mean, actually, it's going to be super difficult here. Like I said, they've won every race since 2017. They traditionally test here, uh, do a pre-Le Mans test. They know the place inside out. And as we've seen, they're so tight on the way they operate the races and how they run the races. I mean, it was a, it was a rare issue that scuppered the number seven um, at Portimao. That's really given unlucky. the Yeah, it's, it's given the title advantage a little bit to the number eight now. Um, but there's so much more to play for. I mean, obviously the points structure of the championship, Le Mans going to be super important. Um, but I think, will somebody beat Toyota? I've got a feeling they will sooner or later. There's just there's something about that Ferrari where I think on a relatively low downfall circuit, the Ferraris are going to be there or thereabouts. And I, I expect a sort of incremental um, improvement in terms of the outright pace of those Ferraris. And the other thing to look out for, of course, is that really interesting sort of intra-team battle we saw some pretty, uh, pretty interesting racing going on between the 50 and the 51, which actually naturally will push them as a team, as, as Ferrari AF course, a little bit further on to try and challenge the Toyotas as well. Well, speaking of Ferrari, they've probably been Toyota's nearest challenger so far. What will it take for them to be able to challenge Toyota for the overall win this weekend? I think consistency, finding that little bit of extra pace. I think the big question for Ferrari is the temperature. You know, how does it perform in these low temperatures? There's some new information for them, yeah. Yeah, and they'll have done 24 hour tests. So even in places like Aragon or wherever they've tested, um, and Portimao as well, wherever they've tested, during the sort of the, the midnight hours, it will get down to a, a similar temperature. So they'll have some data from that. Okay. But yeah, we saw at Sebring that the higher the temperature, 
the, the kind of the, the discrepancy that we saw there a little bit. But I think if, if they keep doing what they're, what they're doing and they exploit the car a bit further, then certainly by Le Mans, I expect, again, a, a super low downforce circuit for them to be really in a sort of good position to, to have a, at least a nibble at Toyota and, and a sort of a fight throughout the duration of a race. And Porsche got their first podium in Portimao, really good signs for them. They've had a lot of success here in Spa before. I mean, this feels like a really crucial race for them, Sam. Why, would, why is that? Yeah, I mean, they've been, they haven't been far away. I think the podium is, is a big sort of morale fillet for them. Mm. They needed that for, for this car. Same weekend, of course, they won at Long Beach uh, in the IMSA race there. I think they're just learning all the time about this car. They, we, you know, it's public knowledge they were disrupted during their private testing. The reliability seems to be much better. Yes, they lost a, effectively lost the car with the number five in uh, Portimao. But it's tough. then again, all the other manufacturers had issues with one of the cars, wasn't it? It was sort of. And they still made it work. They yeah. still made the other car to the podium. They did, and you know, again, drivers like Andre Lotterer and Kevin Estra have Incredibly absolutely, and they've excelled here yes. at Spa Alexa. So I expect them to be, you know, I think if they can reprise that podium position here at Spa, it will be, a, again, a major boost just before Le Mans. Portimao undoubtedly delivered, as always, when it comes to LMP2, with a really thrilling race around that track. But United took home the 1-2. What is it that's giving them such, not even such an advantage, just that edge that they need to take the win? Well, first of all, like all the main protagonists in LMP2, they're a terrific team. That goes without saying, great driving squad as well. Oh, seriously good. I think when it comes to the fine margins, I think the tyres, how they're switching their tyres on in that really crucial opening phase, and, and then obviously strategising the tyres with the fuel and all the great stuff that we get in endurance racing. It was a real redemption story, wasn't it, at Portimao after that? After uh, heartbreaking Sebring. That bizarre heartbreaking Sebring. Yeah. But fair place to them. I mean, you know, they had their own little wobble, didn't they, with that pit stop and Van der Garde didn't know if he was coming out or going <laughs> Incredibly in. Incredibly dramatic. But they got it, they got it sussed. And, and they've, got, uh, they've got Philippe Albuquerque back and they've got uh, Tom Blomqvist back in that team as well. So they're going to be really tough to beat this weekend. But, you know, I also see the, the likes of Jota and, and, and WRT coming to the fore as well because, of course, WRT won the race spectacularly last well, year. Well, and it's also a home race for them. What will it take for them to be able to challenge United? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's a pressure race. Going back to that point about the tyres, WRT are just kind of struggling a little bit to get okay. their tyres in the, in the range. You know, it's all, about, it's all about pressures, it's all about how you treat the tyres initially. And how Will you that get... improve with experience, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be... Whether or not the temperature exacerbates that here is kind of unknown because the temperatures were similar in Sebring as to what they were in Portimao as well. So I think it will be... It'll be fascinating to see how they deal with that. I think they will have gone back from Portimao, done some homework, and they will have really looked at how they can improve that. I expect WRT to be possibly the United Autosports main challenger here, but then we've also got the likes of Jota, we've got Prima, we've got Inter Europol competition who've looked really strong. Strong this season, yeah. yeah. They've, they've looked really up for potentially getting a podium. Before we start talking about the challenges and contenders for LMGT, um, we've actually got some big news this week that Paul Dallalana has retired with immediate effect, so their team will not be here at Spa this weekend. What does that mean for the championship? And perhaps you can tell us a little bit about Paul's racing legacy that he leaves behind. Well, I mean, he's the most successful AM driver in WEC history. He's won 17 WEC races. He won the 2017 title with Matthias Lauda and Pedro Lamy. They really forged this incredible unit, incredibly successful unit. Didn't quite win Le Mans, um, but w what a what a sort of legacy for a, a true gentleman sports racing endurance driver, yeah. uh, and, a, and a lovely guy as well. I think the paddock will really lovely miss him. Yeah. yeah, but we've you know we, again we've got so, some new faces in the paddock this Exciting. weekend. The heart of racing coming across from the states, filling that number. A successful team boys. in IMSA, no? Very successful. Yeah, they've been one of the one of the most consistently front-running teams in IMSA. Ian James is, is the boss there, but he's also going to be driving. Really experienced guy, mainly racing in the States uh, over the last couple of decades. So, yeah, fascinating to see how they get on. Exciting to have a new challenger on the grid because we've already got some pretty good racing at LMGT. Um, Nicky Katzberg and uh, Alessio Rivera going head-to-head -head at the end of Portimao. Ben Keating's gone super well here before. 
I've he knows just, what he's doing around this track. Yeah, I've just got a feeling that the Porsches and Ferraris are going to be, there's going to be a sort of gang mentality now to try and get <laughs> Take them. down the Americans. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was so close, wasn't it, at Portimao? What a race that was, I think. Especially at the end of a race when you've got the last 15 minutes of... The pressure. Rivera was really going for it on uh, on Katzberg there, but kept a cool head, um, placed his car in all the right places. What, yeah, certainly the battle of the season, I think, just sort of bare, bare knuckle fighting in GT, but really, really respectful as well. And no one went across over the line. And it's just nice to see that kind of really tough, but clean racing. The Iron Dames have been scrapping with Corvette and Ben Keating's squad all season along. Ben Keating's perhaps arch nemesis, not that I think they'd consider each other nemesis like that. But however, from a racing perspective, Sarah Bovey's been keeping him on his toes all season long. It's a home race for her. She'll be wanting the win this weekend and I feel like they've been so close to it. What's it going to take for them to finally get that elusive first win? The usual things, speed, consistency, all the cliches we always talk about. But the interesting thing for me is that Sarah Bovey this time last year was so disappointed not to be here. She missed the race. She was replaced by Dorian Pin. So she'll be, there'll be a bit of extra drive. Yeah, there'll be a bit of extra motivation there for her to try and get the deal done with her teammates, Rail Frey and Michelle Gatting. I think they've got a great chance. I think the Porsche should be suited to some aspects of the Spa track. Um, we haven't seen them consistently in really wet conditions, but you know the natural talent of those of those girls in there is going to be. You'd expect that to come, come to through. The yeah, exactly. Look, Sarah Bovey's Belgian, right? She's going to know <laughs> the intricacies. She knows of, her way around a wet track. She'll she's be gonna fine. She's going to know what's going on around Spa <laughs> for sure. So they've got every chance, I think. Again, in qualifying, will it be the the Ben and Sarah show that we've seen, which is sort of g- gathering this following? Fascinating duel, really, in terms of the way that they go at each other. Again, really tough to call, but I wouldn't be surprised, even though Corvette, can they do the hat trick? They, they absolutely can. I think even even with the challenges they're going to face here at Spa, it's possible for them to, to keep this running streak going. Playing devil's advocate, I kind of hope they don't, because we want the championship to really close up in that, in that LMGTM class. Well, let's chat predictions then. What do you think is going to happen this weekend? One from each class, please. Come the on. dreaded predictions again. I, I think actually here... It's going to be super tough to beat Toyota. If we get some rain, that could be the great levelling force here. If we get rain, who knows? It could be one of those lottery races where anything happens, and it usually does at Spa. If it's dry, and I think the, for- the long-term forecast is that it could be dry, it could be wet in qualifying, but dry in the race. Yeah, I mean, Toyota are going to be really tough to beat. They know this place inside out. They've had so much success before. They've got this momentum now. One race win each for two, uh, both of their cars. So I'll go with Toyota, but I'll go for a back-to-back win for Kobayashi, Conway and Lopez. In terms of Spa, they won here last year, and I think they could do, do the double at Spa. So number seven in hypercar, what about LMP2? Super difficult to predict, as always. Um, could be one of six or seven, I believe, here. I'm actually going to go with Prima. I think Mirko Bortolotti, Daniel Kvyat and Dorian Pin have shown that they can, they, you know, they've got the potential to win the LMP2 class. And I, I just see that strength and depth that they have talent-wise could make the difference as ever. It'll all be about the silver drivers, but Dorian has shown that she's absolutely capable of, of teeing up her teammates as well to finish off, yes. finish off the deal and, and, and get the first win. And LMGTM? GTM, I'm actually gonna go for, I'm gonna, the TF Sport guys. I think the, the, it could be a first international win for an Omani uh, with Ahmed Alhati in the TF Sport car. I think that has got the potential to, to really upset the apple cart here. So, yeah, a little, little bit uh, off the beaten track there, but I think they'll be really strong this weekend. And why don't you leave your predictions down in the comment section below? Because we've got some rain starting to pour down here. I think you guys have about just as good idea as we do as to what's going to happen this weekend. I'm going to get a bus. It's the bus stop chicane, so I'm going to get a right. bus, okay? I'll see you Bye later, Sam. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. If you want to watch along with all the racing action this weekend, you can on fiawec.tv. You can follow FP3 qualifying and the race starting at 12.45 p.m. local time on Saturday. We'll see you there. Thank you so much for joining me, Sam. Goodbye.